chromosomal polymorphism deals with the variation in the chromosome types. Since uh, metaphase chromosomes could be seen in uh, best form because during that period the chromosomes remain in highly contracted shapes. So uh, several species of animals and plants uh, they could be identified for the type of karyotypes they possess or the chromosomes they possess. But uh, clear-cut variations in the different portions of the chromosome cannot be observed very clearly uh, in almost every form of organism. But that is uh, quite possible in case of Drosophila because Drosophila possesses polyteen chromosomes. So chromosomal polymorphism can be well studied in Drosophila genus due to presence of polyteen chromosomes in them. And paracentric inversions are very common in this genus. Almost every species of uh, Drosophila uh, possess some sort of uh, inversions, particularly the paracentric inversions, which play adaptive role in them. So these inversions persist in so many uh, species of Drosophila which have been analyzed for this purpose. And some of the inversions in a species may be highly adaptive and exist as cosmopolitan inversions. That is, in several populations of that species, uh, certain inversions become very common. They occur very frequently. Uh, so that is why this kind of study could be accomplished in this genus. Dobzhansky, a well-known population geneticist, uh, selected Drosophila pseudo-obscura for studying chromosomal polymorphism, uh, genetic differentiation between populations, and several other evolutionary phenomena in this species. Cosmopolitan inversions can be used as genetic markers to study different aspects of population genetics. See, in this diagram, uh, you can see the uh, polyteen chromosomes of Drosophila melanogaster. This is one of the very uh, common kind of uh, structure or uh, diagram which is uh, given in so many, you know, textbooks and also through internet you can get this picture. What is actually shown in this picture is that the centromere of all the chromosomes get attached with each other and that forms an area called as chromocenter. From that portion, the different chromosome arm radiate in different directions. So you can identify individual chromosome arms on the basis of its binding pattern. You can see the 2L, 2R, that is left arm of uh, second chromosome, 2R, that is right arm of second chromosome. Likewise, 3L and 3R, then X chromosome could be seen because X chromosome is almost allocentric in case of Drosophila melanogaster. So a single chromosome arm is seen over there. Fourth chromosome is very tiny, but if you have a very good kind of preparation, a small protuberance could be seen and that becomes the fourth chromosome. So this is uh, the uh, chromosomes, uh, polyteen chromosomes of Drosophila melanogaster. And in other species also, one can uh, see the different binding patterns and identify the different chromosome arms. So a number of species of Drosophila have been used for studying chromosomal polymorphism. But before I explain uh, such aspects, let us have idea that Drosophila melanogaster is one of the polymorphic species of uh, uh, this genus and that possesses nearly 300 inversions uh, which have been reported from different parts of the world. Some of them are very commonly occurring, that is cosmopolitan inversions. In Drosophila ananesis, so far 78 paracentric inversions have been reported from different natural populations. And uh, heterozygous <coughs> paracentric inversions provide adaptive superiority to those individuals who carry them and therefore uh, such inversions are selected in the populations. Cosmopolitan inversions are maintained in the population due to balancing selection. It means all uh, the karyotypes like 
ST by ST that is standard gene arrangement in both the homologous chromosomes or ST by inversion that is heterozygotes or inversion by inversion that is homozygous inverted condition means three different kinds of individuals may be there and because of heterozygotes the, uh, the two types that is ST by ST and ST by in <coughs> inversion by inversion these two types also exist so heterozygous inversions they provide actually balancing selection to the individuals of a population now you can see here as i just told you that in polythene chromosome binding pattern is there so one can identify the bands in the chromosome and these bands represent you know the specific area where a number of genes could be located bands and interbands are there so you uh, if you find a definite pattern of binding in both the chromosomes then the uh, chromosome will be looking straight like uh, here the gene arrangement uh, is capital a b c d e like this up to i uh, in other chromosome also exactly the same pattern of gene arrangement is there so this could be referred as est by est so if you observe a chromosome arm looking straight and having a normal bending pattern then that will be referred as est by est in other situation one uh, means uh, you can see that the bending pattern will be uh, varying in certain area or you can see just a portion which is inverted one like in this case a b c it is normal situation but then g f e d means this much area is inverted in both the chromosomes paternal and maternal both chromosomes they show this kind of binding pattern or this kind of gene arrangement so this will be referred as i n by i n because from d to g there is 180 degree inversion so because of this we find a homozygous situation because both chromosomes uh, they have this situation so it is i n by i n and uh, then the third situation could be that one chromosome is having normal gene arrangement that is a b c d e f g h i whereas the other one has uh, this g f e d means inverted portion so due to this situation you would be able to observe a heterozygous loop here in this particular figure the heterozygous loop is not shown but if you have one chromosome having normal gene arrangement that is st and the other one inverted gene order in such condition a heterozygous loop will be seen in the polythene chromosome because in polythene chromosome the paternal and maternal chromosomes are permanently synapsed so or you can say they are in interface and show permanent pairing uh, all along uh, their length so you can see the inverted area wherever uh, heterozygosity is, exists so one chromosome will have uh, the, the normal arrangement a b c d e f g h i whereas the other will have inverted one so it will have to make a loop and if you observe a loop then you can say that here is a heterozygous inversion and uh, you can see uh, in case of drosophila pseudo obscura one particular inversion that is ar ar stands for arrowhead this is name of the inversion and uh, this is a chromosome polythene chromosome where the normal you know gene arrangement or binding pattern will be a b c d e f g h if this is the pattern then it will be a normal situation but if this portion between bc and then up to uh, a portion which uh, coming between g and h if this portion gets inverted then that will be considered as ar so individuals could be there who would have a heterozygous situation that is one chromosome will have normal gene arrangement whereas the other one inverted one so this will be referred as st by ar and uh, this is a heterozygous situation so in the population you will have three different kind of individuals with respect to this inversion one with the st st arrangement other with uh, ar ar arrangement and the third with uh, st by ar arrangement so three different kinds of individuals will be there 
and one can analyze a particular population hundreds of larvae third instar larvae could be used for preparation of their polytin chromosomes and by observing that specific area where ar uh, inversion is located one can know the karyotype of all those individuals uh, one can see that how many individuals in the population are of stst type other cst by ar types and the third ar by ar types so based on that you can calculate the frequency of est and ar in the population so all these things are possible and uh, polytin chromosomes are very good kind of markers for doing a number of population genetical studies what dobzhansky uh, did uh, at the time of uh, you know 1950s means during 1950s he performed a number of experiments by using drosophila pseudo obscura um, flies he actually collected flies in this particular figure uh, what he did that uh, i'm going to explain he actually collected um, flies from three different uh, portions or areas uh, of uh, uh, sierra nevada range near yosemite national park united states of america so there is a place sierra nevada and this is an hilly, uh, hilly area so he actually collected flies from three different heights that is uh, shown here uh, on the left side you can see on this y axis the height is shown 2000 uh, feet then 6000 feet and 10000 feet so he collected flies from uh, the portion which was uh, almost uh, 1000 feet in, in height then he collected flies from the area Uh, coming from 5,000 feet of height and flies coming from um, means 7,000 or 8,000 feet of height. So what he observed, he um, cultured those flies in the laboratory conditions, and then observed their larvae, and he was able to record that uh, the uh, larvae showed highest frequency of EST, that is, the standard uh, gene arrangement. 53% of the flies uh, were of this. Uh, you know gene arrangement then uh, ar 32% and ch stands for kirikahua it is a kind of inversion arrangement and this uh, its frequency was 15% but when he collected flies from her altitude he found the frequency of est going down it became 30% ar it increased up to 48% kirikahua ch 22% he also collected flies from the height of uh, nearly 8000 feet and he observed that the frequency of est was minimum here it was just 5% ar it reached to 71% and ch 24% so what obvious change you can see that uh, definitely if flies are being collected from lower height then those flies are adopted to live at higher temperature so at higher temperature the frequency of est is high and at low temperature because flies collected from um, very high uh, you know very high alt altitude they uh, showed very less frequency of est ar its frequency was 32% here at the um, lowest you know height but it was 71% when he observed flies collect, uh, collected from the high, you know uh, height so uh, you can say that uh, uh, means these inversions they show uh, selection or adaptation uh, at uh, definite height uh, definitely the environment would be playing role in the uh, selection of certain karyotypes in another experiment uh, you can he observed the change in the frequency of est and ch gene arrangement in the same species drosophila pseudo obscura so what he observed he collected flies in different months of the year like march april may so in these different months of the year he collected flies from the nature brought them in the lab and observed the frequency of just est and ch in this case ar is not considered so he found that in march the frequency of this est is nearly 50% then it goes on uh, decreasing up to june and again 
there is increase in the frequency of EST uh, and uh, um, up to you know October it reaches again to nearly 50 percent so in different seasons or you can say months the <clears throat> frequency of EST that varies indicating that uh, such kind of gene arrangement EST or CH are actually subject to selection here for CH you can see during March its frequency is just 20 percent and it increases in April uh, then it remains almost same in May and in June it, it reaches to highest you know frequency and then again in next uh, further months it is going down and reaches to nearly 20 percent in October so uh, this kind of change in the frequency of EST and CH gene arrangement was observed by Dobzhansky indicating that these inversions and their specific gene arrangements are subject to natural selection. He also brought flies uh, from the nature and cultured them in, under laboratory conditions at two different varying temperature that is at constant you know 16 degrees C and also at 25 degrees C. So what he observed that at uh, 16 degrees C means at colder temperature the frequency of EST uh, that is very less means it is hardly 10 percent when there is less temperature means at 16 degrees Celsius the frequency of uh, our percentage of EST is uh, nearly 10 percent throughout the year you can see here March, April, May, June in all these months there is no change in the frequency of standard gene arrangement whereas the same ST or standard gene arrangement its frequency continuously increases when the flies were maintained at 25 degrees C and uh, see he started working uh, almost in 1946 March and then uh, these flies <coughs> got adopted in the laboratory conditions and a continuous increase in the EST arrangement could be seen. So by January 1947, uh, if these flies were maintained at 25 degrees C, then the frequency of EST reached uh, quite high, means nearly, you see, more than 60, 70 percent, um, more than 60 percent it has reached. It means there is role of temperature on the existence of uh, specific karyotypes in the population. Here in this diagram, you can have an idea uh, that uh, what is the frequency of uh, this TL that is tree line or Kirikahua that is CH or Pike's Peak or Arrowhead or standard gene arrangement. So these are different gene arrangements that is inversion types as well as standard gene arrangement. And uh, Dobzhansky actually collected fr flies from different states of uh, United States of America particularly the southern uh, portion of USA and uh, then he observed the frequency of these uh, five uh, different gene arrangements and he found that EST gene arrangement it is you know uh, uh, varying you can see here it is varying in certain portions and then it is going down and uh, it is uh, quite less in you know several other states so since they experience varying abiotic conditions and accordingly the frequency of EST are different uh, you know inversion types like AR you can see its frequency varying in different states or different geographical periods so this indicates that inversions are actually under the influence of natural selections a specific karyotypes could be favored are disfavored depending on the environmental conditions. So this